And you didn't leave your state like them fallen angels. You're my child. But you can choose to live any way you want to. And we've told you about Kenites and all sons of Cain, all, they're Satan's children, but yet they were born of woman. Yes, sir. So he's asking them, and that's, how, that's what we're here for, to be his voice, to tell them, return. Ye children of men, come back to me. Choose me. Every day of your life, throughout all, even though God has given you the strength and all that you need to abide in this earth age, he is saying, I'm not going to force you to do anything. But I will ask you to return. Or what is the, the root of that return? Repent. Just simply repent and turn from your wicked ways. I know we all, if my people, yes. come on somebody, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and what? Turn from their wicked ways. I'll hear the name. Now, we, see, we get to thinking about that, that land we tear from and we walk on. But see, you got to remember, we were made out of dirt. Yes, we were. Yes, that's all we are. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? In other words, we need him sometimes to heal our land. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Everybody in here, y'all not hearing, that, that not hearing what the Lord's saying this morning now. How do you get healed? It's not a doctor. Well, I'm talking about, well, why did the Lord let something happen? Well, you ought to be surprised. God gets the glory. When someone has any kind of abnormality, what's going on, when they can still praise God in spite of what they're going through, he gets the glory. I don't understand what's going on. He had to tell his disciples one day, what are y'all talking about? Did this man sin or his mother? No. They are that that he might, that God might get the glory. We run around here talking about how cute we are. Who gave you the cuteness? Huh? Why don't you give back to him now? He turned it over to you. I said he turned it over to you. See, 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 we don't understand. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 33 and 27, write it down. That's a good one to remember. I want to read. See, we cannot minimize. What God is doing for us now and what he's already done. Yes, ah, Lord have mercy. And he'll make it plain in this verse. You don't, even a child can understand this. If they just read it, it, it put a self-explanatory. Deuteronomy 33 and 27. It says, the eternal God, the eternal creator the eternal. is, he has to be, well, is Thy refuge. Yes, sir. Notice how she, I said, I, I got a claim that you got a claim that he, she, or it's got a claim. He has to be my refuge. Now listen, listen, listen. See, you have to get, this is a Hebraism. It's like, uh, and underneath are the everlasting arms, the everlasting power. When you see arms, it refers to God's everlasting power. Why is it important we grasp that? Because in order for something to happen, the person got to have the power to do it. Now, since God is, has everlasting power, look what happens. And he shall thrust out. Do y'all see the, the, the enormity of the word? He shall thrust out the enemy before thee. Didn't say enemy, he said the enemy. <laughs> he got him covered. Bang, gone. You don't have to worry about him no more. Enemy is before thee and shall say destroy them. Now, y'all got quiet. I think about a while ago, there was a, a pretty good old prophet once say, 
And God gave them instructions. When you get that, destroy everything. Don't let a sheep, don't let nobody go. Destroy them all. Then the prophet had to say, well, what? You say you've done what God said? Well, why am I hearing bleeding sheep? And all of that. Anybody read anybody? Why am I hearing that? If you done what God, not, 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 not. Oh, how much pain they paid for that. Yes, they did. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There comes a time when, well, how do I apply this to my life? Some things we ask God to take away from me, he told us to destroy it. Yeah. All well, all right, all right, Holy Spirit. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. Amen. Always want God to do something that he's already told you to destroy it. Amen. You have the power to do it. Ask it to get out of your life. I've given you, if there's any sick among you, call on the elders of the church. They will anoint you with all and pray the prayer of faith. But who? God will raise you up. And some folks, I don't want to call. Well, then stay sick. Okay. God ain't going to fight with you. You know, because he's turned you over to your own devices. Or because if we stay to our own devices, we're going to get in some destruction. We're going to destroy ourselves. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ooh. See, they, see, this book is real if you take time to, to study it. And this particular psalm even goes on to the end. And I want you to begin to focus on that. God has laid it out for us if we would but listen. Listen now. Next verse. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past. And as a watch in the night. These are Hebraism then that would be clearly spelled out in Second Peter. Anybody mind going with me? Okay. Third chapter, yeah. eighth verse. Now keep in mind. Keep in mind now. We we know that we this is the millennium. And this is what he's talking about. And we must understand for a thousand years. Look what he said but in the eighth verse. But, beloved, yes. talk to us. Yes. Be not ignorant of this one thing. Yes, sir. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. Yeah. The etymology that, that, that night and all that, they're talking about a passing of a day. In other words, God is in full control. You don't have to let him see you sweat. And I'm sorry. You don't have to fall into the nonsense of the world. You can choose to do that. You can do whatever your little heart desires. But be willing to pay the price. Amen. I'm sorry. Even in this positive negative universe. Whether you acknowledge God or not. You know certain things you can't do. We ain't going to let our child just put his hand in fire. And we don't do nothing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Y'all see what I'm saying? But now. What, even with that. God takes care of us all. Now turn with me. I hope y'all will underline this. And see some of my young kids might and, and always listen to the rappers and talking about, hey, well, well, not, well, I'm going to let the word speak. Let's go to Psalm 44. We're going to spend some more time, but we ain't got there yet. But I want to begin to put this verse in your spiritual mind. So you can begin to understand uh, if you trust him, this is what he's going to do. Psalm 44 and 7. Listen what it says. But thou. Is anybody hearing what God is saying? But thou has what? Who's, but thou have saved us. Where's he saved us? 
from our enemies. Do you see the trend? He takes care of you spiritually. And even on this one, he takes care of all your enemies down here. Does anybody hear what the Lord's saying? And has put them to shame that hated us. So all of y'all walking around thinking that the rapper's talking about some haters. You don't have to worry about the haters. God got you. <laughs> he done took care of all that for you. Those that hated us, who cares? They hate your soul. They hated me. What makes you think they're not going to hate you? Isn't that what the book says? Preachers, am I making this up? Okay, I just want to make sure now. See, we don't have to worry about the haters. Those who don't care about, who cares? All we must do is Follow what thus saith the Lord. Now listen. Look at the, look at the fifth verse. It starts getting good now. Thou carries them away as with the flood. Okay. Now that's kind of a heavy verse there too. Remember, everybody, everybody that thinks that the Noah's flood wiped out the whole world, that's not true. Thou carries them away. As with the flood. See, the flood of Noah was to take care of them hybrids. Those giants. You know, I read, you know, that, that one verse over in Genesis, I think about six. Is it three and six? I don't care. You know, when he said, when when the, 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 the children of God saw the, the ladies of whatever, I can't, you know what I'm talking about. I can't remember. Sometimes I need to go, God won't let me do that. Keep in mind that those fallen angels, yeah. the giants, this is what this is talking about. Thou carries them away as with the flood. They are as a slip, slip, sleep in the morning. They are like the grass which groweth up in the morning. Listen now. It flourishes and groweth up. In the evening, it is cut down and withered. Now, anybody know anything about gardening? Can't be referring to that. Don't no grass grow up and down in the day and night, does it? What he's talking about, lifestyle of the rich and famous. Mm. Oh, you begin to understand? When you grab hold of to the nonsense of the world, it looked like they're getting over Look like they're getting over, like they got it going on. But God said, there's going to come a time when I send the death angel. And how do we know that? Because we just studied God's history. Egypt and all of his goodness, pyramids, whatever they build, don't mean a thing. But God said, tell them now, I'm sending them through. You, as my child, get an unblemished lamb. The etymology, there's those symbologies of and truth. Take that blood and cover your lentils. And when the death angel passes over, it will pass over you. Now, Jesus is our Passover. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? There's a whole lot in there if you just spend a little time to hear God. Every, every phase of our life, he's in control whether you want to it or not. Our job is not to buy in. Remember up there he talked about that world? Don't buy into the... Do you know the Bible said if you are a friendship with the world, you are an enemy of God. How are you going to be God? Hmm? You can't. Every dictator, everyone that tries to set himself up as a God, yes. where are they now? Yes. 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 We have to start beginning to trust God, and especially in these end times when it is so much that can get you swept up in it. Even some religious groups got folks so messed up they don't know which end is up. Now listen, listen, this is getting good in the seventh verse. Now don't think. For well, we are consumed by thy anger. Nah, no, no, no. God ain't mad at us. 
Y'all know them little Kenites and got in there mess with this. I studied this for a long time. We are consumed by thy tumult when I decide I want to do it my own way. Now listen, and by thy tumult or uh, trouble, we, see what I'm saying? And our trouble. Begin to really look at that. God is telling you even when he rattles your cage. What we said to us praying for me, baby, kiss the paddle. Amen. Acknowledge that I'm troubled by what I'm doing. Yep. It may look good on the outside, but let me explain something to you. No matter, you cannot get away with God. God knows every fault, every secret sin, everything that you think that you're hiding from somebody, and the day and time that what you're doing begins to trouble you, you become godly sorrowful because God is stirring up your net. He's trying to make you look at what you're doing. It's not that, see, if you just look at it, God's going to kill him. That ain't what it's saying when you go back to the original language. But we will be consumed by his anger if we don't repent. Now never lose track of that fact. And by your by your tumult or your that word can also be translated the same way. Like what you see where some some scriptures say God produce evil. God doesn't produce evil. When you take it back it's tumult. Means he will stir up a little stuff in your life, okay, to get your attention. And and we are troubled. So if he's destroying us, ain't no way we can be troubled, can we? Hmm? No, sir. You see what I'm saying? Just just use common sense that somebody. Listen, listen, listen. Eighth verse, give me down to the tenth, we'll be through today. Listen, listen. L listen. We listen at that eighth verse. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Uh, Y'all thought past this may our secret sins yes. in the light of thy countenance. Yes. That is such a verse filled with grace. Yes. Some of us need to have God's light. Yes. I can't do it. Yes. Your best friend can do it. Yes. But in your secret time, when you least expect it, God will shine his countenance. Yes, he, it, he began to just, just shower you with so much love that you can't help but look at what you're doing. And y'all been there yet? I don't know. And you don't even know what I have. But what we can do is let the word speak to it. Let's go to Haggai. I may have read this to you a hundred times. Haggai 1, verse 5, 6, and 7. We're about through, but I'm trying to stop. Woo! Look at 5. I'm going to read just how many few minutes. Here's the thing we have to understand. When the light of God's countenance comes on us, we have to make a decision. Well, I can't do it for you, church. Beloved, you can't do it for me. Temptation is going to come. And stuff going to happen. But remember, 1 Corinthians 13 or 10 or 10 or 13. I get them turned around sometime, mate. Huh? Okay, I, I get it turned around sometime. But listen now. He said, I would not put any more on you than you can bear. And I will always give you an escape. Now the problem come is, Will I take the escape? Amen. Will I take it? Number five, it says, Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, that includes all of his children, consider, did it say my way? Consider your way. Yes, sir. When you're out there trying to hustle and do your thing like the world tell you, you have sown much well, and bring in little. Well, you got to begin to see that. Yes, sir. It's counterproductive on your body and your soul. Amen, 
You eat, but you have not enough. Now that's an all-encompassing, it's like a polishing engine. If you're out there promiscuous, you can't never feel that. You'll never get enough. If you're drugs, they'll tell you, once they got you, you'll never get enough in, because you can't feel that hole. You got to be replenished each time. You see what I'm saying? But God can deliver you from it all. Yes, Isn't that what the book said? Now, uh, you drink, but you are not filled with the drink. Now, you can put in there whatever you want in there. You can never satisfy your craving for things of the world if you overindulge in it. You will never get enough. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. I mean, you will never, ever meet all of the different trends. Hmm? Skirts go up, skirts go down, girls go sideways, pants go sideways, they go up. They got skinny suits, skinny pants, what all of that? You know how God handles all that? All of us dress in modesty. Apparel. Okay, it's clothes. So you ain't got to worry about no styles or nothing. That's all you got to do. You see, yeah, and none more. That's just a Hebraism. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. What is that saying? Is I don't care how much hours that your job offers you to work overtime. If I told you to go to Bible study, you might as well just throw that money in the street and let the fish eat. I'm not saying God going to... I'm sorry, but see, you're not doing what he told you because if you do what he told you, remember I told you, I got your back through all generations. My job and your job, do we believe that? I said, do we believe it? It's so important that we begin to understand. Last verse, the 10th verse, let's get on down so we can go. For, listen at the ninth verse. For all our days are passed away in thy tumult. Not wrath now. We spend our years as a tale that is told. Now, I hope y'all begin to grab this. Every president come out of the White House, what, he gonna write his memoir. Yes. He want all of that, and that's the best you can say. If what somebody else wrote, but what you do for Christ will last. Does anybody? <laughs> See how simple that is. You ain't got to worry about writing no books. You ain't got to do nothing. People will know it. Anybody, any saint of God that's left this earth and did something according to God's will, you know it. If I say Mother Teresa, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Dr. Martin Luther King, a pastor, doctor, you know that. Yes, sir. It lasts. Those memoirs can only be read by a few people, and then if it ain't saying what they want to say, they're going to put it down and don't look at it no more. Amen. Yeah. But what you do for Christ will lie. Lord have mercy. Ten. Here's the verse that won't stop it. It be misquoted so many times. The days, and this ain't talking about the soap opera now, the days of our years <laughs> are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet, get this straight, is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off 
And we ain't talking about, this ain't got nothing to do with the flyaway doctrine. There's a lot. And we fly away. But the etymology, when you take it back, and we pass away. In other words, the etymology of this, I'm sorry if you're in these clay pots and God tarries, you're going to die. Just get that straight. So uh, once you come to that reality, you understand I need to prepare myself Amen. to meet my Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. I know, I know I hear stuff. This, this is a guy on television and say, I'm going to live forever. Okay? And he got stuff. He's taking 9,000 vitamins, doing all this stuff. And I don't care what he say. No, sir. It's appointed. Mm-hmm. Appointed once to die. Once to die. And what the book say? And then the judge. You can't get by God. If you want to do your thing, I tell you, we'll we'll, we'll read that at certain, you know, corners, nights. But the bottom line, the days of our years. Now, you got to understand, we're talking about that fact that we're in this earth age. There's limitations. You got to face them. But then you got a better place yes, sir. where your body, this thing is gone. You never age. Just look at any time you see in the, in the Bible about an angel. They're young people. Yes. I, I, I mean, it, just, just look at my, our body's going to be young. Yes, yes. I mean, the days that we Hey, God, you're through with this. And when you're through with it, if you've served him, you know where you're going. Mm. Yes, Lord. There's no doubt. And even those folks that didn't serve him, they're going to be on that, that other side of the gulf. I can't judge them. You can't either. But we all must appear before the judgment seat of God. This is what this is talking about. You got to go there. And it'll soon, this ain't nothing but a pew. And you go. What we have to do is begin to respect our God. Begin to acknowledge him that he saves us from whatever we're going through. And he'll always be there. 